then they will send it to the renderer to render that. And it's, def it's really deferred, but how long is the deferred? Sometimes it can take up to a week. So imagine that you have a website, you have a breaking news, and then the crawler doesn't get that, and only after a week, it says that, oh, I crawl the page, and I see the page, and now this is breaking, but it's not breaking anymore. Okay, but this actually makes sense if you think of it, there's over 130 trillion documents on the website. So if you are Google's or if you are crawler, it's just so much work to crawl all the web page at the same time. And take note that this is the data from July 2016, which means it's three years ago. So probably the numbers have been like double, probably not double, but a few, a few times. Okay. And how can you do this um, if you are using JavaScript framework? How could you um, help the browser, help the Google bots, help the other bot to actually index your page faster? Because I say that it takes longer, right? So there's a few ways that you can do it. The first way is called dynamic rendering. So how does dynamic rendering work? Okay. So dynamic uh, rendering means like you're switching between client-side rendered and pre-rendered content for specific user agent. So for example, we have different um, when you when you open the browser, you browse to a page. There's actually a user agent that <coughs> that said that uh, we know that who is making the request. It could be just normal person us, or it could be any bots like Google bots or other bots. And for those bots, there's a specific user agent that is sent in. So by detecting this, what we can do is, if we know that the user agent is from the normal user, like when we normally browse the website, we just send them the normal uh, HTML, the normal JavaScript file that we see. But if it's a bot, we can do something. If it's a bot, we can apply a dynamic renderer in between before we send them to a Google bot. So when Google bot requests, or we get that it's a Google bot request, then we do some pre-processing. We have a something in the middle, render the whole page before we send back to the bot. This process, as you see, this process takes slightly longer time compared to the um, normal user request. So. Um, that's why we need to split it into two. We are not doing this for all the user, but we just do it for the bot, just for the sake of SEO. But for the normal user, we just serve like the normal HTML and JavaScript file. Fine. And there are a few dynamic rendering solutions available. So one of the famous one is Puppeteer, and the other one is called Rendertron, and there's something called Pre-Render IO as well, which uh, for pre render IO, they open source the code, but some part of the code you need to pay. Okay? So, Puppeteer and Redditron is open source by Google, uh, which means it should be quite okay, right? Uh, let me show you some code for using Puppeteer or using Redditron, and how can you achieve this. Okay, so this is the code. If you are, um, you can use um, this, imagine you are using Node.js. So you need to write a Node.js uh, server-side code and just use Express. And for the Rendertron, you install a package called Rendertron Middleware. Then for the bots here, this particular line, now you can specify like all the bots that are available and join it with uh, a pipe. So in this case, I'm just putting in Google bot, but you can just put more than Google bot like Facebook bot or other bots. All the bot that you want it to be included, like all the string that you want it to be included, then you um, you just use this uh, Rendertron middleware and set the proxy URL, and you deploy. Um, <coughs> so it's quite easy. You can deploy the uh, Rendertron app. So just now I give you the two URL, right? You just get the Rendertron um, the Rendertron applications and deploy in your um, server, or you can choose any cloud provider. And then get the URL of your Rendertron applications. Then this will be your middle part of the dynamic renderer. So wherever the web um, someone requests your page, it will first come to this come to this 
uh, server-side applications, and it will detect that, hey, this is a Google request, this is a crawler request, or this is a normal request. So if a normal request, then you just send your code as normal, but if it's a Google request or other spot request, it will send a different, uh, it will send a fully random place. You just go to this random front, and based on the bot, and send it over. Any questions for uh, any questions until the diamond render, rendering? Yes. <coughs> your application? Yes, okay, let me just go a little bit deeper. So for this one, GitHub, Google, Chrome, render, Rendertron. If you search Rendertron, this is built with uh, Puppeteer. So they have, they have this instruction. This is actually a server-side application where you can just download it and then it's, and deploy it to your server. And your application, this is different from your own applications, like your own uh, SPL website. You can just deploy it to your CDN as normal. But you need to deploy one more thing, which is called Rendertron, to your another server. And this serves as a proxy. So wherever the Google request, it will first go to the to this Rendertron, the applications, then when it detects that it is um, from the users, from the normal users, it will just grab all your resources and send back to the um, send back to the user. But if it detect that it is um, request from um, crawler, it will go through the Rendertron. It will use the Rendertron to render the um, your 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 resources, a full HTML static page. <coughs> Then send it to the uh, HTML page. Uh, send sorry, send it to the uh, send it to the bot. Okay. Um, so, will Google uh, like like that we show bot different content than than the regular users? Like if the content is different, like I've seen some bad practices where people have some marketing stuff for for bots and then not for the regular users. So, what what's Google take on that? Um. Okay, that questions I can answer because I am not a Googler. Yeah, I'm a Google developer, so it's something like an MVP. But um, probably if you pass me your contact, I can check it and then um, I can ask for the questions and reply you. Yeah, but for the board, right? So one of the questions that I get asked last time for the presentation is, um, especially for this, like how do you know how many boards are available like, in the world? There's just so many bots available. Like in this case, I just put in Google bot. But how do you know there's Slack bot, there is like Baidu bot, there is like Bing bot, Microsoft bot, whatever bot that is available. So um, currently what do I find best is I ask Google, and um, I ask Google this page like how many bots available. And there's actually a GitHub link that lists down all the bots that are available. What you need to do is just copy paste all the string and then just throw it in. If you don't care like what are the bots that you want to do a specific thing, you can just do that. Okay? Any other questions for the dynamic rendering? Sorry, I was a little bit nervous just now, so I sort of like open up a little bit. So um, uh, the interesting thing is uh, for dynamic rendering, if you are a normal web page, when you send down your content, right, what do you <coughs> What 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 is what do the user see at the first point? The, what they will see is like um, the HTML, like your normal heading, and then you have body, right? But in your SPA applications, what is in the body is just one type, probably your you call it add root or your root content, and then you have your JavaScript, and um, depends on the dynamic or depends on the router that you you are setting, then you will paste the HTML and JavaScript content and paint your page. That's why when Google, when other crawlers crawl the page, it's only see the body and just one BIB. Because it doesn't wait until all the JavaScript process and then it takes a snapshot of, of the page. That's why if you are not doing the additional like step for dynamic rendering, they only see a blank page. Like all the crawlers only see a blank page. Because they doesn't wait until your JavaScript finish all the process, then it takes a cap. It take a snapshot. It take a snapshot just when it receives all the content, the HTML, the body, oh, it's done. Then take a snapshot. 
it's like you are taking photo, it's just taking too soon before you just post. Okay? Yeah. So that's what it happened. So with dynamic rendering, you are deploying a person in the middle and like manually do the like you imagine someone uh, an agent in, in between and and do the search like someone requesting I want to go to uh frontcom.lv slash schedule, for example, and then I'll just op type over the browser, type, and then wait until the page fully loaded, and then I send a request to the bot, the middleman, the dynamic renderers, then send a request to the bot. Hey, hey, this page is fully rendered, 100%. Take a snapshot now. So this is what the dynamic rendering do. This is what the code do. Yes? I have a question. I see you have a sticker, Lighthouse sticker on yeah. your platform. So you must know how Google Audit does it. I, I, yes, I later on I will go to the lighthouse. The, the, my no. presentation is still very long <laughs> away. Just that just now I think I didn't yeah, explain it well in the speaking. <coughs> That's why I do a little bit more. <coughs> okay. So any questions or on dynamic rendering? Okay. So uh, the next one is static rendering. So dynamic rendering is one way. Static rendering is the other way. So. What is static rendering? Okay, static rendering happens at the build time and it produces static file. So imagine you um, have your um, <coughs> Angular or React or Vue.js page ready, the application ready. What you are doing is you can um, you can use some tools or you can manually open the browser, go to the page, like for example, um, frontend.com slash schedule and then you wait until the page fully loaded and then you take file save save a copy and save to your uh, and save it like a html file and then deploy that file together with your whole application and when google search the first thing they go is go to your fully your save html file for the schedule page instead of going to the um, instead of going to the um, blank blank page that did the the, the, the the normal HTML, the normal JavaScript. Okay, so. Okay, I show you an example. I have my ready here. Okay, this is uh, Angular applications, but you just imagine it in a React way or in a Vue.js in whatever application that you use. Normally, when you build a file, right? When you build a project, right? Let me just clear it. Normally when you build your, so all my source code is inside a project, this source code here. So when you build your project, normally you will generate out a this folder, correct? Okay, so your this folder contains all the uh, all the JavaScript file. Normally you just see JavaScript file and an index.html because basically every page that you develop is in JavaScript if you are using single page application. Am I correct? Yeah. Then the next thing is you can deploy, um, you can use a tool to generate the static rendering. Like for example, now you see that I have so many folders like agenda, asset, COC, forms, post, schedule, all this. And all this inside when I open it, what do you see? You see index.html. Like this file is not generated by me. It's not generated by me. I when I develop the, the web page, when I develop my applications, I didn't have all this index file like source, session, speaker, all this file. All, all this file is generated because I deployed, um, I deployed a tool to help me to generate static file out of all this route during the build time. So let's take a look at probably the um, schedule page. So in the schedule page, you see that, um, so I just scroll down to the body. my 
uh, applications. Okay. So let me show you. Let me show you the difference. If I build it without generate out all this, and I build it with 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 all this content. What? Okay. So I later on I will show you what are the tools that I'm using. But basically, this is the tool I'm I'm using. Uh, I have a webpack. I use webpack. Anyone use webpack in their applications? Okay. So there is a plugin that you can install for webpack, and you can configure it to generate whatever route that you want to generate. I will just disable this first. I'll just disable this first to show you the difference before and after. So I run a com. This is my command to build it. So you just clear my um, folder. Tell me that it's generate out all this file. So if I open the folder again, if I open my distribution folder again, you didn't see all the file that is generated just now, correct? You only see JavaScript file and one index file and some ICO or my resources file. Because I disable my tool to do pre-render. What if I uh, enable back my pre-renderer? So in, in this in, in here, I have a tool called pre-render SPF plugin. Okay, so when I deploy this, I need to set um, I need to set some. But for example, how uh, these are these are not important settings. You can just read it online. The important one is the route. Like what are the route do I want to pre-generate? I have a home. I have CS. I have a code of conduct. I have schedule. I have sessions. Like I know that the user will definitely go to this route. I want this route to be pre-generated a full HTML instead of instead of just like. If the normal index HTML is only like this, like just now I said, if you deploy a normal one, it will just become like just one because the JavaScript will actually generate out the HTML and paste it here. Okay? So with this, you are saying that I want to pre-generate all this route, then what they are do what the tools will do is it will generate it will like someone browsing the website and then take a snapshot, save it at HTML. So when the user or everyone browse to the page, it will serve the HTML that pre-generated instead of the one the one with uh, with just one element, blank element. So in this case, your uh, website performance can be faster and it can be SEO because it's SEO ready. Yes. Uh, so I see it's, uh, some uh, pros are uh, commented out. So it is like uh, like this crawler doesn't need to know about this path. Uh, Oh, because I don't have a slash post route. Ah. This is a comment to say that, oh, this is for the post route. But if they will be uh, commented out and uh, the start page for them uh, won't be generated, so the crawler will see blank page. Uh, if I don't have, so this is uh, just a comment that I want to say, so this is not I commented out. So, uh, for example, if for this particular schedule page, I don't want it to be static generated anymore, then I just comment it out. Or I just delete it. Okay?
still before the JavaScript or Rails? Is Special consideration from programs that they sort of interacting interactivity on the page to work, so it's pre uh, pre rendered page. So maybe this is going to be too much detail. Yeah, um, I can, maybe we can talk more later. Okay, but generally, it won't, uh, it won't, for, for these static rendering solutions, it's actually improve your performance of all the website, but there are times where you need to do dynamic rendering or when you do static rendering. So as you see just now, if I do static rendering, I need to pre-list down all the route that I have. But you know something like your news website, your BBC, your CNN, all the news website, the breaking news, you can't, you can't say that, oh, today I have a new news, I have a new URL, then please add it to your, to your, to your code, to your file, and then please run the build again, and generate out the, the static index that you ever found again, right? That's why in that case, for the very dynamic content, you need to go for dynamic rendering. But for the um, for your application, that probably like you are building uh, application that mostly um, user access after login, and you only have like one or two pages, your home page, your about page that you want to really catch it, then you do static rendering. Because by doing static rendering, it's much easier. You can just deploy the whole thing to your cloud storage, to your Amazon S3, and then just catch everything in CDN and just serve it and it's much easier to do it that way. But if your application is like, it's very dynamic, all the route is it's so dynamic and you want to catch them all, then you need to go for the dynamic rendering. Make sense? Um, what happens if I change the API about, if I get news over the API and the news changes there, does it show the old uh, news or new news? Okay, so if you change your API, because the API is not part of, this is the, this is the front end part, so, the, the front end only, like when you, you change the result in your database and I'm calling the same API, it, it, it doesn't impact, um, it doesn't relate to the Definitely, if I have one news first, I build it, then it shows one news. If I change the text in this news and then I uh, run this uh, pre render as I want them, mm -hmm. does this uh, create these uh, like events and everything? Only, yeah. API is run again. only until the next build trigger. It will just do the rendering, all the all the all the, 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 the news page that you mentioned again. Then you will see the new content. Else, it will just stay at the old one. Although your 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 database content is updated. Okay, so that's one. So the next thing I'll talk about is how do you inject meta tag um, uh, in your SPA application because um, like if you want your meta tag, you 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 meta tag is needed, especially when you show image. On, on your social media and share a link, you want that to show a big image and all that. So there's a few ways. So for Angular, Angular have something called an Angular Meta service. This is built in, so it's a service that you can use. Later on, I will show the example code of this. For Vue.js, uh, it's not officially support, but um, there's something called Vue Meta that you can download and use. And React, there's a React helmet where you can use to add the Meta tag in, in your project. So this is how it looks like. So for uh, Angular, they provide a service called Meta, and then you can use the Meta service to add whatever tag that you want. Um, probably you can build your own attractions, <coughs> because like um, some title or images that you need to set all this in order for it to work. Okay, if you want to display on social media on any other, uh, any other social media site. Okay. And then, what are the tools that are available? There's, um, so you don't want, you really need to test your link before you publish it, you publish it to production, right? So these are a few tools that are available for you to do the validations. For Twitter, Twitter have a validator, which uh, is a card validator you can use to validate whether it's really show up the image and the URL and the, and the description correctly before you deploy it. For Facebook, there's a Facebook debugging tools that you can use to uh, check it before you deploy it. Or after you deploy it, you just check it because it's just a, uh, it's just a URL that you place in and um, you check it. And um, Google also provides something called mobile friendly test. So the mobile friendly test is something like this. What you can do is you just type in your um, your website. Just so for example, I type in uh, a random website. That will tell you whether your, uh, your page is mobile friendly. And if it's mobile friendly, 
uh, Facebook rank mobile friendly website higher somehow. Yeah, so it's in one of the algorithm. Yeah, so you can use all these two to do your validations. And the mobile friendly test, when they do the when they do the uh, when they crawl the page, they will tell you whether this page is mobile friendly and if there's any um, if there's any error, so that you can view the details. And if when they load your page, if there's any JavaScript console errors that showing up, it will tell you as well. So you can know exactly how it looks in the see you take a screenshot as well. You can see how it looks exactly in your mobile phone and how the Google see that. How the bots see that. Okay? Okay, so this is how the card value the, the Twitter card validators look like. You just paste the URL and then you will see whether there's an image or no image. If you configure your meta tag correctly, you should see an image. Okay? Okay, so this is a mobile friendly test. Yeah. The other tools that you can use is the Google Search Console. This is not new. Anyone use Google Search Console before? Oh, okay, good. So this is the search console that you can use. You can use the HTML inspections and do the things that you like. And <coughs> There's, but there's one new search console feature that is if you have um, that you can use to test your code which result. This result is no result that, for example, if you search for a uh, currency converter, you see this thing, right? You see this uh, JSON LD. This is something called rich result. So you also want to test this before you deploy it to when you deploy your code to make sure that everything is work correctly. So if you want to test your rich result, in um, the search console have have a features to um, help you to test this rich result. What you need to do is instead of the URL, you paste the code in, you paste your LDJSON code in, and it will tell you that whether this LDJSON is valid or not valid, and just see it live whether it is working or not working. Okay? So if your page has some brief overlap, okay, it will also give you some events that trigger and things that get generated. Okay, the next tools that you can use is Lighthouse. So what is Lighthouse? Anyone use Lighthouse? Wow. Okay. Do I need to go through that? <laughs> okay. So let's do a test. So Lighthouse, you can run it in different way. The easiest way that you, know, you just if you just want to see it like live. You can just go to the um, all this tab, and then you just run it. You just select mobile or desktop, and then click the SEO tab. And then, um, because for just SEO, we don't need to throttle anything. Then you run the audit. Now, let's test and see. Front end con. Don't push it. <laughs> I pre-run it before I I I, I conduct this this session. So. The result is definitely good. Okay? I knew it. <laughs> okay, so you see that the SEO result is 91%. So as consider A, like good. So it will tell you that what are the things that you can you can what are the best practices. So there are there are 10 audits that you have. Um, so this means that a checkbox maybe is passed. So, but there are additional enhancements that probably can, can be done to hit 100% if you want. But it's only, if only that, those audit make sense because sometimes the audit um, probably doesn't much related to you. It's just a good thing for you to, um, it's just a, just a good tool for you to uh, give you some suggestions, but not necessarily to follow everything like reach 100% all the time, okay? And uh, for uh, Lighthouse, you have a CLI which you can just put it during your, your, your build, build process. You can just set it like, um, I want to generate out a report wherever, wherever time I just I want to deploy um, applications, please run a test on my uh, Lighthouse or see the report. You can do that as well. Because uh, Lighthouse provides an NPM package which you can install and run. Okay? And um, SEO audit is, uh, is there's a few things that's coming soon, the tab target and structure. Tab target, they will, um, this is the coming soon, it's not available yet. The next thing they can help you to test is, tab target is still like, for, for, for example, your, your big button, right, you want the user to click, right? Is those follow best practices, is that big enough? 
like the color striking enough for the wizard. Okay, they were also uh, later on adding into the lighthouse all this. Then you can you can give you some suggestion when you run the test. Okay. Okay, some best practices. So Google Boss, Google Bot, like how Google Bot crawls the page is actually use Chrome. It's use Chrome to crawl the page with a cache. It's Chrome what you want. Okay, so internally. The Google Bot, I actually hit that myself as well because I created a website. I use the um, I use the uh, Lighthouse tool to test, like SEO is 91%, like everything like generated nicely. But when I use mobile friendly test, it's actually show me that it shows some JavaScript error, which I don't I, I didn't see the error if, if when when I run the test myself. Then I realized that um that this is presented by one of the uh, SEO, SEO master by Google, then it's tell that oh actually Chrome is using uh, Google Bot is using Chrome 41. That, that's why it cannot, it's only support ES5, it doesn't support ES6. It means that your crawler doesn't understand yet ES6 code, which means you need 42. Okay? And it has mixed support for web component. If you are using web component, the the crawling probably also might not really work properly. And it's also stateless. Okay, so the best practices is you transform your code from ES6 to ES5, or you use some, uh, or you use some something like a polyfill I/O. You just do dynamic polyfill. If you detect that it's a, it's a browser doesn't support ES6 features, you just download more polyfill. Okay, yes. Uh, they plan to upgrade, but you know they won't tell you when. Okay, okay. So when I say it's stable, what I mean really mean is there's no service worker, there's no after storage. So when you think about crawl, uh, crawl, the crawl, 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 okay, there's no service worker, no after storage. It has to be so if you are based on those to show the show the data out, then I do that you 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 actually cannot do it. Um, but there's polyfill, so you just drop the polyfill and see what are the things that uh, can can be helped by the polyfill. Okay, so. You you can test your um, you can test your result and check like in this can I use .com or Mozilla MDN is Mozilla Document Network to see that whether a particular features is support by Chrome 41 because this is the minimum this is the version that Google support now so if you are using for example some latest features JavaScript like array map or or object entry something like that then you really need to polyfill it and check uh, in this in this in, in this one uh, what is it support or what is it not support whether you need to deploy a polyfill or not. Okay? Okay. So when would you want to use dynamic and static rendering website? Uh, actually just dynamic. So um rapid changing website you definitely go for dynamic. So um, if you uh, want to use some <coughs> modern features um, more than like, more, more than Chrome 41 features, then you um, you also need to use um, dynamic because if you deploy dynamic rendering or static rendering, right, which means you pre-generated the page before the the crawler sees it, so then you can use the features like you deploy the latest features and you just give Google but you don't you didn't need to do anything and give you the whole HTML. That's why you, you don't depend on Google bot to do the work. If you do, do this for them, then you are fine. If you are deploying dynamic rendering, you don't need to care about whether Chrome is using 41 or using using 35 or anything because you run it for them and just tell them, hey, please just take this page and test that. Is that? And if your website needs a strong social media presence, then you definitely, um, if you use SPA, definitely you need to go for either one of these. Or you just go for server side rendering. Okay, so one thing I think everyone already knows, but I just say it again. You don't need SEO if your page are behind the login because if your page is behind the login, there's not SEO anyway because everything is behind the login. And these are some future enhancements from Google. Um, there will be crawling and rendering uh, integrated and um, some modern, they will be using most modern crop that just now you asked when they will upgrade, they are planning that, but date is not specified. And um, there will be more sustainable update process, but the update process, um, currently there are, so in the top is mentioning, um, currently the update process actually, there's a lot of things to do So now they want to make sure that it's more sustainable, they are developing the process of update. And these are 
are some useful resources if you want to know more. Uh, I suggest, I strongly recommend the last two rendering on the web. So the rendering on the web is written by, um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so just check all the links, but especially these two. And um, the JAWS, the, um, the, the guy from Google actually has this video series talk about how to render your page properly in JavaScript and SEO. It's a whole video series and it's quite short. So take a look at that. And yeah, this is the talk that I mentioned. Okay.